Hi, I'm Pat O'Leary with the USDA's Office of Communications. Today we're talking with Ginger Harris, statistician and demographer for USDA's National Agricultural Statistics Service. Ginger works out of the regional field office in Louisville, Kentucky, and she's going to prepare us a little more for the Census of Agriculture release of data on April 11th by talking to us about what's new in this census. Ginger, we spoke with Adam Klein last week about the Census of Agriculture and what makes it different from other NAS surveys and why it's so important. Please tell us what changes did our farmers and ranchers see in the questionnaire this census? Well, for the most part, they're pretty similar census forms than they saw in previous censuses. The census is always asked about land ownership, land use, and the crops and livestock farmers and ranchers grow. However, in order to represent U.S. agriculture today, the census questions are always subject to revision. For the 2017 census, a major change is in the demographic part of the census questionnaire. That's where we ask about the people who make decisions for U.S. farms and ranches. We've added new questions about military service and about decision making on U.S. farms and ranches. There are also some other new questions sprinkled throughout the questionnaire. We've added additional questions about the dollars farmers receive for marketing directly to retail markets and institutions and about the sales of value-added products produced on the farm operation. Can you give us some detail on why these changes were made? Well, after each census cycle, NAS always solicits feedback from stakeholders in order to remain relevant and to make sure that each census is representing U.S. agriculture today. After 2012, we received feedback suggesting we needed to consider revising the questions about the people on U.S. farms and ranches to better capture the roles of all persons involved in U.S. agriculture. For the 2012 Census of Agriculture, data tables included data for the principal operator, which was only one person per farm. These principal operators were predominantly men. Allowing only one principal operator per farm did not reflect farms where multiple people participated equally in decision making for the farm. So we convened an expert panel to look at how we can best capture the role of different people on the farm. They suggested allowing multiple principal producers per farm. So that's the major change we're going to see this census, from one principal operator to multiple principal producers. And you may have heard in my answer a change in nomenclature. We're going to move from a nomenclature of operator to producer, and that was another recommendation of this expert panel. Talk to us about how changes like these affect the process of data comparison. Well, again, the major change was a change from one principal operator to multiple principal producers. So you're not going to be able to make comparisons between the principal operator in 2012 and the principal producers in 2017. The expert panel we convened after the 2012 census recommended we create a bridging table so you can make some comparisons across the census. This bridging table is going to allow you to make comparisons between the principal operator and a primary producer. There's going to be one primary producer per farm. That's the person that's designated as having made the most decisions for the farm. If multiple people make the same number of decisions, we're going to move to another question to break the tie. That question will be about the time they spend working off the farm. The person who spends least time working off the farm will then be the primary producer. Ginger, how exactly are changes made to the census questionnaire? Well, after each census, we solicit input from the data user community. People can respond right now on our website where we have a question asking about what content they would like to see on the 2022 Census of Agriculture. We're always moving forward. The census occurs every five years, but it's a multiple year process. We're always getting ready for the next census, even though we haven't even released the current census yet. So go to our website. There's a link and you can provide your input on what you would like to see in the 2022 Census of Agriculture. We know that data release for the 2017 Census is just around the corner, but what do we know, if anything, about the 2022 Census of Agriculture? Well, we know the Census is always going to remain important and a vital tool for farmers and ranchers, policymakers, and the wider agricultural community. 
The census is the only consistent source of data for every state and county in the U.S. It provides a current snapshot of U.S. agriculture, but it also allows people to look at long-term trends. We also know that the census relies on the farmers and ranchers for the data that we publish. And we really want to thank all the farmers and ranchers who respond to the census. If there are any new producers out there, we encourage you to sign up on our website to participate in future surveys and censuses. Thank you so much for everyone out there who has worked to make this census the best census ever. Thank you, Ginger Harris from USDA's National Agricultural Statistics Service, joining us long distance from Louisville, Kentucky. And thanks to all of you for watching us today. We invite you to join us for our next video on the Census of Agriculture, when we'll talk with Mark Schleusner in the NAS Illinois State Office. And Mark will give us a tour of the newly merged NAS Ag Census website. We'll see you then.